Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Steven Inks. And off the back of one pen, one ink, one month, where I just use one of my pens and one of my inks for an entire month, absolute torture, do not recommend, I decided to go the opposite direction and I have gotten this set of inks from uh, Colorverse, the New Horizons Limited Edition set, uh, which was purchased from Goulet Pens. Um, I think Colorverse is my favorite brand of inks at this time. Now I may say something different down the line, but for now, this is what I love. We're gonna look at this and I'm gonna use every single one of these inks to do a drawing for you. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Here it is. Check that out. This is the New Horizons set from Colorverse. There's one, two, three, four bottles of ink. You can see they're gonna be 15 milliliters, so not as small as their minis, which I've done a video about on this channel before, um, and not as big as their uh, 30 milliliter, which is their typical thing that they do as far as size is concerned. So a little bit in between. Um, a thing I love about Colorverse is that they do um, usually do things on the theme of space and science and exploration, um, something that as a science teacher, I'm very interested in. So let's see what's inside. Okay. All right, so uh, first thing I notice, we've got these stickers and these are related to the colors that are on this, displayed on the side. Kuiper Belt, Pioneer Container, Pluto and Beyond, and Amar, how do you pronounce that? Arakoth. I've, I've, I've said very many times that this is not a channel for pronunciation, so if you want that, you need to go somewhere else. Um, but uh, we're gonna look at and see what else we've got here. This is some circular cardboard thing. Um, I'm just gonna pop this out and see what we've got. Oh, okay, so uh, looks like this is a limited edition and I've got a, a number out of 2006, so about halfway through with those. Um, cool, I don't know what else to do with this, but it's, it's kind of nice. Um, and there's a little bit of context here. It says the first mission to Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, exploring frontier worlds. Okay, I think that has something to do with the uh, the names of the ink. Um, here's an interesting thing that this says. It might be a non-native speaker of English alert. Do not use this pen for purposes other than writing. Am I gonna get in trouble? All right. Um, what we've got in here is an example of what the inks are. You can see we've got kind of a green color in this Pluto and beyond. Arakoth has a sort of, uh, definitely a lot of, um, a lot of uh, a shading in, in at least three of these inks. And Arakoth is a little bit of a brown, Pioneer Container sort of violet, and Kuiper Belt. It looks almost black, but it's kind of a navy black, so it's got a little bit of a bluish thing there. I think we're, we're gonna see it in a little bit. Uh, oh, and then there's some of the actual science. Uh, if you want to look at the, uh, it's a timeline of the spacecraft launched in 2006 uh, that got close to Pluto around 2015. And you can see its path right here. They go into a lot of detail. They really go the extra mile here. And wow, look at that. These are the, uh, the bottles themselves. And the design work is always incredible. I, I love the package experience from Colorverse. They're super cool. Um, I'm gonna pull one of these out. Okay, and their bottles are interesting. I, I wonder if they're prone to toppling. I've never had one topple, but it just feels like because of the circular thing. It's like a little uh, like a little bird beak there. And this is Pioneer Container. All right, it's a small, it's a, it's a smallish bottle. It's not as small as their minis. I wonder if a pen will fit through um, this cap right here. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I, I, there's always a backup plan if that doesn't work out. Um, but yeah, we've got that in this here. Let's see if I can put these off to the side. Um, Kuiper Belt. This is the one that I thought might be slightly bluish, and I still do see a blue hint in the, the labeling of the package, so that's possible. We will see. And 
Barakoff. Still that brown. I think that's the name of a, a meteor or a, an asteroid, perhaps. I should have looked all of this up beforehand. Uh, I may have to do a deep dive later. And uh, Pluto and Beyond, a green color, a very nice kind of um, muted green. I do like that color verse. They don't go straight out for any color. There's always a muted or a, or a subdued version. So super cool. All right. Well, let's see how they uh, how they fare with my pens. And I can't just do one pen for all of these inks. I gotta use multiple pens. I just gotta do it. So let's get that started. Okay, so if you've been a fan of this show for a while, you probably know where this is going. I need four pens with similar nibs, so I pick my favorite brand of pen with the exact same nib every time. Uh, the Pen BBS 480 is the first one that I've chosen. Um, love that cedar finish. This is my 456. The 500, which is probably my favorite filling mechanism in any pen that I own. A super great one and a hard one to find, unfortunately. And uh, this is my 499. Is that the right number? Oh yeah, it says so right there. Okay, um, and this is a, a uh, brass pen. So these pens are going into these inks and uh, I'm just gonna pick random ones and put them inside. So let's hope that the pens go inside. Ooh. Sort of... Uh, Hurts my masculinity trying to open that one. All right, um, let's see, Pluto and Beyond, I'm gonna give it the 480 treatment. And I think this is gonna go inside. I think the pen's gonna go in all the way, we'll see. Oh, it does, yay, okay. So, uh, there we go, partially filled. Of course, with these, you always wanna go in for the second fill, get all those air bubbles out. And there you go. All right. Nice one there. Um, gonna need to dab off this, uh, this ink that's gotten on the barrel there. And from there, we're gonna move on to the next one, also at random. Um, see the cap back on here this is great content me just capping and uncapping things there's a little bit of tension into whether or not i can actually uncap these pens they <laughs> pretty solidly sealed okay arakuth let's do this one's going to be done with a vacuum sealer and uh what you're going to do to make this work is you twist it open lift it up and then we're going to push inside past the threads there i'm actually going to partially push this down because i don't want to push a bunch of bubbles through these pens this this ink bottle is really full hmm that was a bit disappointing let's try that one more time. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I guess that'll have to do. Um, that's enough to get some drawing samples out there. And she's looking good. There we go. Four, five, six is ready to rock. Um, we got two more inks to go in here. All right, Pioneer Container. Let's see. Okay, I'm getting better at this. I'm building strength over time. It's like a workout. All right, we're gonna put 
Uh, this, we're gonna put the Pen BBS 500 to work on this one. Um, this pen is really unique in its filling system. What it does is, uh, let's see if I can get a little bit of focus on here. There's a spring inside, but the spring isn't engaged until you remove this piston right here and then twist it into place. All right, and now we are spring-loaded. Whoop! There we go. And we're gonna place that inside the Pioneer container. And I'm just gonna push down. Oh, and hopefully not damage my uh, ink supply. Pushing down and that one ends up pushing a lot of air bubbles up. All right, and that's gonna do for me. I, I would normally fill this longer, but I am I am noticing that there's a lot of ink in this bottle. A good thing, value for your money, but also um, don't want to spill any of it. So we're just gonna leave that right there. And um, I have a full video on this pen, but just to to emphasize the uh, removal of the of this piston, we're twisting it out, pushing it in. And then we can twist that one in, and uh, this pen is locked and loaded and ready to dis deploy ink. Okay, last but not least, this one's gonna go inside of the uh, 499. A lovely pen, very pretty. If you like heavier pens, this is a great pen for you. I just realized I need to cap the Pioneer container. All right, and Kuiper Belt, you are going to be the final one. Oh, this one is a tough one. Okay. I thought I was improving. I thought I was getting stronger. Kuiper Belt begs to differ. This is this is what you all subscribed for to watch an old man lose his uh his upper body strength over time. Oh, these these bottles are very full. It's making me nervous. All right, but we got a good fill here. I'm just gonna try and get as much of that back into the barrel as I can, so that I don't have to waste it all. And wow, a lot of ink went up ended up on that blotting paper. But um, here we go. Now we have this guy ready and I got four pens filled with ink I cannot do a drawing with each one I got to use them all four so we are doing four pens four inks four drawings I'm so excited let's get into it okay so before I uh, go into uh, doing some line samples here I want to point out the setup I've got over here which is that I have every single pen lined up with the ink bottle because I'm afraid that I'm going to forget what the name of the ink, ink is as I draw with it. And also the green one, Pluto and Beyond, if you'll notice, there's a little bit of a stain there. So the ink dropped out the side when I was drawing with it. And um, yeah, it, it stained pretty badly. And I, I also had that issue with the pen itself. And I could show you that in just a second. Um, as soon as I finish adjusting everything to move my my setup back, um, it turned out to be uh, I don't know I don't know if that's a problem. It is kind of a problem with the uh, the finish on that Pen BBS um, cedar finish that it stains a little bit, but uh, the ink itself might be part of that as well. So um, that's a negative. The others didn't seem to have that problem. But we'll, we'll get into it um, in a bit. So what we have here, and um, I think actually I want to move in a little bit. So we're just going to zoom down with the drawing there. And um, we're going to start with that Pluto and Beyond. I'm going to write it at the top so you can see what it is that I'm working with. Um, here you can see also what I was talking about 
And it's all over my fingers too. Just kind of on the sides here, it looks a bit greenish. So there's semi-translucent material. So maybe I'm thinking, I'm overthinking about nothing. Um, but it, it's sort of taken on a green hint. So uh, let's just see what kind of lines we get here and what the ink is like. All right, here we go. Pluto and beyond. It looks very dark. I didn't think it would be this dark. So let me just zoom in on that right there. It almost looks black, and then at these points right here, you can see that it's a bit lighter than that. So, yeah, okay, so I can get some semi light. It definitely has a lot of shading. Look at this shading. It's actually, it's quite nice. Um, if you're looking for a shading ink, it is cool. I mean, um, I'm curious what that would look like in a, in a drawing context, but well, I guess we're, that's what we're here to find out. So um, I can get some nice little um, pieces like that. Let me do a real quick, I'll do a real quick 3D shapes thing like I normally do. So you can see that I am doing a couple more here. So I'm gonna keep this very, very quick. I think that doing the drawings is helping me see some of the other qualities of this ink. It's it's kind of like a like a dark grassy kind of green, so could be very useful if you're doing sort of a a nature themed scene, which I do that sometimes. So that I, I could see this kind of being something that I enjoy using, um, and it's very unique. I can't think of. I'm sure if you're a big ink fanatic. You could think of a couple of inks that are look similar to this, but to me, that's a pretty, it's a pretty unique color. So Pluto and Beyond, cool. That's just because I like it. All right. Um, next we have Arakoff. Arakoff. Uh, I'm never in my entire life going to learn how to pronounce that, and I'm okay with it. I know how to spell it because it's right in front of me. Um, but I'll probably still spell it wrong. A-R-R-O-K-O-T-H. Definitely a lot lighter. Having a little bit of a flow issue. I think my pen, which was cleaned recently, may be a little bit lighter than it's supposed to be. But uh, this one's also got some good shading qualities, as you can see. Definitely the lightest one so far, and that might end up being the lightest one of the entire bunch. Um, yeah, it's got a, it's, it's sort of a beige, almost tannish color. I mean, you should probably do that on camera. What do you think? You guys want to see me actually do the thing, or should I just do it off camera? Um, sometimes the shading qualities of your inks might um, might give you a uh, an unexpected texture when you're drawing, so you have to have your your shadow shapes really locked in in order for that not to affect it, because it almost like rounds out some shapes and you get that sort of inconsistency. I kind of like that. It's one of the quirks of drawing with fountain pens for sure. So this is a very light brown color. Again, I think it's quite unique. I personally do not have any pen inks that are similar to this in any way. Um, sometimes lighter inks are a harder sell for me because you don't, you miss that contrast. But, um, Anything could work, and, and I could see this being really fun. So, Arakoff, you also get my smiley face. Cool. All right. Up next is Pioneer Container. And that one is sort of a violet color. I do have another purple from, uh, from Colorverse, which is called Delicious Sleep. So I'm curious how that is going to compare to this. Pioneer. Okay, darker. Definitely darker. 
definitely a, a shader, but kind of like Pluto and beyond, I'm seeing a, a purple that, that dips into black uh, very easily. And um, it definitely looks like a purple here and more so than it had uh, looked when I was writing with it. The drawing is bringing out some of the lighter tones. I'm putting some pressure on it to get the um, shading. I'm not getting as much shading as the Pluto and beyond, which is fine, but um, now I'm seeing some texture and some shading even just with this first shape right here. If you look at that, yeah, there's a lot lighter at the top than it is at the bottom. So, okay. My instincts about these pens, uh, the, these inks, is pretty on the money. I am noticing that they do tend to have kind of um, a consistent flow and working. So this means that, that it'll be easy to, to use them all together on a big drawing. I know some of you have been asking me if I ever use more than one uh, pen or one more than one ink on the same drawing. And the simple answer is I don't, but it also kind of sounds like a cool idea. So I thought I'd try it at least once. And this is probably the best time to do that when I'm actually talking about multiple inks at the same time. All right, so that's Pioneer Container. It's got a sort of um, a gray purple kind of a hazy purple look to it. Um, interesting. And of course, according to my smiley face rating system, I'm giving it a smiley face. Um, check back for the last one. This is Kuiper Belt. And I'm 90% sure I'm pronouncing that one correctly. Um, And I was guessing that this was sort of a bluish black. It's very dark. Um, and it does have some shading qualities, but those are harder to see. It's sort of a navy blue black um, cool color. I would definitely use this uh, as an everyday carry type ink because um, High contrast is going to be good for a lot of utilitarian purposes like writing notes, um, journaling, writing a letter, things that other people will read. Um, and also, it's not completely black, so there's some fun to it. It's a nice flow. Even though these um, pens are pretty much with the same nib, um, the way that they deliver ink is very different, which is interesting. I hate to say it, but I might be slowly being convinced that uh, dry inks actually exist. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. All right. Ooh, this is fun. Actually, this might, even though this one is kind of the most plain color, maybe even almost boring color, this might be my favorite of the four. I'm trying to think if I have a favorite. It might be this one, and then Pluto and Beyond. Maybe the second best, my second favorite, I should say. Not best, but um, favorite, followed by Pioneer Container. And Arakoth, even though I do like all four of these, I'll give it that smiley face, uh, this one's going to be less useful to me because of its lightness and color. But we're going to try and find a really good use for light colors in the drawing that's coming up. Excited to share it with you. Okay, so uh, before we get into it, I, I wanted to talk about a scientific and artistic uh, concept known as atmospheric occlusion or sometimes called atmospheric um, perspective uh, and uh, why I chose to do what I did. Um, this is a test uh, sketch that I, I started with um, trying to figure out how to make uh, the concept I was looking at work for this. It's a little bit interesting because we have different colors here, 
But um, the basic idea behind atmospheric perspective or atmospheric occlusion is that um, the further away something is, the, um, the lower in contrast it is to the sky. In this case, our sky is this blank white space on the, on the paper and the lighter it is in, in color, or at least the, like the value of the color. So um, what I try to do is take the darkest colored ink and put it at the foreground and slowly move backwards. Um, some of the color shifts in hue here make it kind of confusing. And the one that really got to me was this green because I feel like even though um, this color in the front, this sort of bluish dark color is kind of um, the darker of the colors, this green comes forward a lot and um, it almost feels like it's on top of this layer here, whereas the purple and the, the brown do kind of seem more towards the back. So I wasn't quite sure what was off about this. Um, this isn't the final drawing that I'm gonna do. This is just a, a test sketch with the concept I was trying to work with. So um, what I did was I did some thumbnail sketches of as many different color combinations as I could. I have these little squares um, you can see that I uh, that I marked those squares with um, the colors, the the foreground color being in the front and and up towards the the top here. Here's the background color that I used. So I just tried every combination I could think of, and um, it's interesting. You can see how the darkness and lightness of things is a perspective cue for us, and that's because that's how it really is in um, in real life. It has something to do with a uh, particulate matter in the in the sky and then if I explain it correct uh, if I explain it incorrectly someone's going to get upset with me um, so I'll just explain it in the most general sense lighter and lower contrast uh, the further away it is and when you betray that order like uh, with this one in the top corner here um, you can really see how it it looks off like these mountains are dark and the trees are light um, and I couldn't find the combo that I liked really. There's there's gonna be some compromise because of the specific colors I'm using. If I was just using this dark color and this purple, you can see how these two layers here actually have a really nice vibe. Um, these two colors, the darker and the lighter. But then the hue shifts that we have where we go from brown to green doesn't quite work. I think the response should be, uh, as opposed to the original sketch that I have, which had this dark blue in front and then the green, purple, and brown. I think I like this right here, which is the green, dark blue, purple, and brown being the furthest away. Um, sometimes when you're not sure what you want to do, it's best to just try everything and see what sticks. So this is where I'm going to start uh, my drawing from. and. Um, We'll just kind of see what it, where it, where it ends up because I, um, to be honest, I, I really don't know uh, what the final product is going to look like. So uh, in this uh, drawing, I decided to go with um, the uh, kind of a jungle theme. I felt like the green being in the forefront um, that made it made a little bit more sense. Um, I struggled with the Pluto and beyond. I know I said earlier that Pluto and Beyond was going to be maybe my second favorite color after the uh, Kuiper Belt. I still really enjoy the Kuiper Belt and that, that part is coming up after this green part. But the, uh, the Pluto and Beyond had a very long dry time and so for that reason it was prone to smudging. And you could see in one of the, um, the cut-ins that I have in a little bit where uh, it smudged along the leaf and uh, it really bothered me the entire time I was trying to do this drawing just all of the um, the smudging I was getting and um, some of that is on the paper and on the pen and on the ink but seeing as how um, I didn't really have any smudging problems with the other inks and they, they all sort of had the same nib because they were all the pen BBS nibs um, I think I'm gonna fault the paper a little bit but definitely the Pluto and Beyond ink so when I switched over to the Kuiper belt which is what you see in front of you here I was having a little more fun with it 
Um, and there is a point where I, I really started to enjoy this concept, the different colors representing different depths in the uh, perspective drawing. Um, it, it works somewhat. In some spaces it works. I feel like the uh, lighter colors towards the back worked pretty well. Um, the green to the blackish blue, not so much, uh, but well enough that I thought it was a worthy um, experiment, a worthy go of it, and um, I, I, I think I would try it again uh, with some different colors. Uh, let me know what you think. I think it turned out kind of cool. So final thoughts on this project. Although it didn't go exactly how I'd hoped, and I think that the different hues like the greens and the purples and the browns being together um, made the concept a little bit confusing, um, I'm glad I stuck with it and used all four of those ink colors. I might try this again with some blacks and some grays and maybe a violet color. The Pioneer container is actually excellent for that, and I really enjoyed the Kuiper belt. Um, as well. So I'll probably be using those in future uh, drawings. I hope you really enjoyed watching this and uh, I hope you're also trying to do something new to stretch your style and um, create new artwork. Let me know what you're doing in the comments uh, and I would love to know what you think of my drawing and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and helping me grow this channel.